Hello and welcome to Indianomics. Uday Kotak has trimmed his stake in Kotak Mahindra Bank to meet Reserve Bank regulations. From 30% his stake is now down to a little less than 20%. But the manner in which his stake has been reduced has raised a few eyebrows. The Reserve Bank, uh, uh, the Kotak Bank issued 100 crore non-convertible preference shares with a face value of 5 rupees each to raise 500 crore rupees. The move has expanded the number of shares by 52% and this effectively brings down the, the promoter's stake from 30 to about 20%. There are some arguments in favour of this deal and some who have spoken against. The rules say promoter's uh, uh, share paid up capital must be cut, not the percentage of equity. So quota could be in the clear. But the rule is based on the premise of not allowing any promoter to have a dominant voice in the bank. Even with this trimming of stake, Uday Kotak's control over the bank has not fallen. So, is it not kosher? Before we discuss this issue with experts, here's Jaimin Bhatt, the group CFO at Kotak Mahindra Bank, on the move. This is a perpetual preference share, so it has, uh, uh, it's not something which a shareholder can ask for a repayment back. So to that extent, it is perpetual. It is something which is part of Basel III and uh, our guidelines, forming part of Tier 1 capital. And uh, to that extent, it is part of uh, Tier 1 and will count for every purpose as capital. Mm -hmm. uh, second, if one looks at uh, I mean, with the communications which uh, are there, uh, the requirement for us was uh, part of uh, to make it as part of paid up capital of uh, to bring down promoter holding as was always for us as part of paid up capital and uh, to that extent uh, this kind of the the holding is now uh, shade below the 20% requirement for part of paid up capital well, that's the bank's uh, defense of uh, issuing preference shares. Joining me now is former Deputy Governor at the Reserve Bank of India, Mr. R. Gandhi. Mr. Gandhi, thank you very much for joining us. Well, uh, will the RBI be satisfied with this method of bringing down uh, Mr. Uday Kotak's stake via preference shares? Uh, international battle definition of capital includes this kind of long-term perpetual instrument. So, to, to that extent, uh, one could uh, argue that it is within. But whether RBI's uh, expectation of uh, promoters uh, uh, holding to be up to brought down to X level, whether it is only uh, normal shares or in, it includes uh, preference shares, that is not very clear. We, we, we need to uh, look at how RBI is going to react to that. But the definition, as I said, that international definition of capital funds, that includes uh, perpetual uh, bonds. Yes, yes, but these are non-voting shares. Now, first, uh, let's come to first principles. What is RBI's underlying purpose in asking a promoter to bring its stake down? That is, above, uh, one is these uh, voting restrictions, uh, because voting power, that has always been a um, uh, point for RBI. That uh, how far a, a single individual, a group of individuals, uh, uh, or group of entities connected together can exercise control over the decisions of the uh, bank. So that is always a consideration. Under that consideration, the voting power may not come down because this particular set of shares are uh, non uh, with non-voting rights. That would, that would mean that uh, voting pattern uh, that, is, that doesn't undergo any change because of this capital raising. So, uh, uh, but the circular does not talk about voting uh, rights. So uh, that's why we need to be watching how the Reserve Bank would uh, look at this. Yeah, that is exactly what the bank CFO told us, that both in the Reserve Bank circular and in the license agreement uh, entered into with Kotak, the words used is to bring down stake as a percentage of paid up capital. Uh, and the bank, of course, is claiming that it is abiding by this rule. Uh, that's, uh, the, in, the, in the circular, it talks only about the share capital. It doesn't, uh, there, it doesn't talk about uh, voting perspective. Voting is a, there's a separate instruction. 
right so that is why the uh, they hear there is a mismatch between uh, the voting rights of the person and the uh, share capital related right. ratio yeah yeah so that whether it will be brought in alignment that's what we have to see okay now separately we know that under the banking regulation act voting rights are anyway restricted to 15% so therefore can rbi overlook the higher control exercised by the promoter in this case no not not over not overlook mm. in the sense that it is comply because when the voting related concerns of rbi is fully addressed by that restriction retaining at 15 now the capital related uh, definition has internationally accepted on that basis it has been brought down i i i think on that count press reserve bank would see it all right no but if the voting related restriction uh, it, that restriction was always there why did the rbi force all the promoters to bring down their stake then yeah because but the wide uh, um, uh, banks to be widely held mm. that is one important uh, consideration of rbi one number two even if voting rights are restricted a single person having very large stake they, they can definitely influence the uh, board uh, discussions and that uh, i wanted to keep it in check so that uh, others will also be with a larger stake or whatever it is they should be present that is the general idea exactly my point uh, okay let me just put it more simply if you were in rbi how will you vote on this uh, request yeah i see that i see that based on the uh, current uh, and i accept it norms the uh, shareholding pattern has changed that is okay for me that's what i would it is okay for you because mr uday kotak has proven himself to be an excellent banker so you are comfortable giving giving him a larger control but uh, can rbi discriminate i mean what if the next guy who comes along uh, uses the same uh, but is not as good a banker so that's why the comfortable when we say we mm. are talking about fit and proper right yes of course yes yes right yes so uh, once a person is found fit and proper mm. then larger stakes by by uh, reserve bank will be uh, comfortable that's why if any if any holding past 5 mm. beyond 5 anything comes mm. reserve bank looks at the fit and proper uh, exercise if the person is uh, not fit and proper no. then reserve bank will not even agree for by crossing 5 mm. also N- uh, yeah but even if a person so, uh, that uh, that's why if by individual comparison will have to be based on the fit and proper criteria not just pure number that both are having 18% or whatever it is no no that is not the way to look at whether they qualify themselves to hold that 18 no sir but even if a person is fit and proper and is very good rbi doesn't allow a corporate entity more than 10% it doesn't allow a promoter more than 15% doesn't it see when we say when we say 10% 18% whatever it is with reference to what that's what i said okay. that the, the, the definition international <coughs> definition to a include okay. uh, the capital to include the, with the perpetual uh, instruments yes right yes. so when we say 10% 10% of what 10% sure. of only pure shareholding okay. voting rights shareholding only okay. or non voting rights shareholding also okay so that that way when we look at it then the uh, conclusion can be different point taken mr gandhi uh, thank you very much for joining us and i think uh, uh, you kind of uh, clearly make yourself very clear when you say that if you were in the rbi and you had to sit in judgment of this request uh, uh, you would find it kosher that's a, a telling comment we have to take a break on that note uh, but don't go anywhere we are going to be back with a special panel of guests uh, also among them ex rbi uh, experts to discuss uh, how this proposal will be looked at by the central bank